All right, John, I'm really excited to catch up with you here at Mobile World Congress about what's going on in the world of spectrum, both near term and long term. So let's start a little closer in. What sort of machinations do you see coming up that'll be more tactical for operators? In the US in particular, there's, a, there's an effort to open up mid-band spectrum in 3.1 to 4.5. That's progressing. It's a bit slower than the carriers would like. Um, in, in addition to that, there's efforts to expand unlicensed operation in the six gigahertz band to allow outdoor unlicensed operations using an AFC system. We're also trying to enable a low power, very low power operations for portable devices and personal area networks. And then of course, um, you know, there's a, we're, we're very excited by the fact that we're starting to see millimeter wave roll out across the world. The FCC opened up millimeter wave spectrum in July of 2016, and, and they have been very successful in rolling out millimeter wave in America, and we're, you're seeing the benefits of that. And here at this show, you're seeing millimeter wave connectivity right over there on a bench. We're showing connectivity in the range of 1.3 to 1.4 gigabits per second. So we're all really excited that, that the capability to deploy mobile millimeter wave connectivity is um, you know starting to materialize worldwide. Midband for 5G, really important blend of coverage and capacity. In the U.S., at least, we're seeing substantive completion of those deployments. Big emphasis on massive MIMO arrays. What's next for this upper midband, this seven gigahertz to sixteen gigahertz range? Yes, thanks for that question. So. Um, last year at Mobile World Congress, uh, FCC Chair Rosa Mersel identified the 7 to 15 gigahertz range as a prime band for um, 6G opportunities. So one of the things we're demoing right in back of me is the capabilities of Giger MIMO um, operations, which essentially provides coverage like lower mid-band in the 3.5 gigahertz band and capacity that's available in the millimeter wave band is kind of what I would call the Goldilocks spectrum. So we're expecting to use that spectrum to deploy wide area coverage with, with massive bandwidth providing gigabit speeds and we're very excited by that. And again, it's going to be a few years before that technology is available, but we, we, we're going to be ready when it is open. And the reason why we started in 2022 and continuing now in 2023 is we know it's going to take a while for that spectrum to open because there are incumbencies that are going to have to be addressed. But we believe that it's a win-win opportunity for basically deploying new technology for both the incumbents as well as the mobile operators. How are you thinking about spectrum sharing more long term? I think with CBRS we've got a good look at how that access system can work, about how the environmental sensing networks can work, but what's the longer term picture there? Yeah, so uh, we're seeing in the U.S. that a lot of the um, private networks are using the spectrum sharing approach in the 3.5 gigahertz band. And for private networks, that's been the main focus. And what, what, what we're trying to enable at Qualcomm is there's a spectrum band referred to as the lower 37 gigahertz band. And we've had a proposal in the FCC that would allow the commission to allocate six 100 megahertz licenses in this 600 megahertz wide band. And by requiring operations to coordinate uh, listening periods, each of these six licensees can actually operate in the other portion of the band and have effective use of the full 600 megahertz spectrum by, by sharing and listening and avoiding when there are, are cases where two users might be right on top of one another or passing by. And we've shown through simulations that this is a win-win opportunity by having a finite subset of licensees. Each licensee can have access to the full spectrum. And then I've got to ask you about 6G. If I look at a lot of the research papers that are coming out today, a lot of the collaborative uh, development work that's going on, a lot of emphasis on these sub-terahertz frequencies, this 100 gigahertz and, and beyond. Mm -hmm. How are you thinking about that in both kind of a point-to-point -point perspective and then maybe a pathway towards mobility? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, so we have a demo on terahertz frequencies here. We're seeing it mainly as very line of sight, but the speeds we're seeing are like 300 gigabits per second. 
So it's massive capacity, and the demo we have is basically for a front hall application. So it will travel several hundred meters, but provide this massive capacity. So there's opportunities in areas where you may not be able to run cabling, and you need this demand. And, but but it's, again, it's, it is more longer term, it is more in the 6G time frame, and it's not going to be the coverage band that the upper mid band will be, but there's, there's definitely going to be an opportunity to deploy in the terahertz band. Excellent, John. I really appreciate you taking the time to share your perspective and tell us about the work Qualcomm's doing here. Thank you, Sean. Good to talk to you.